From a thieving manager to the death of the band's little brother, NSYNC's reign as early 2000s hitmakers was filled with heartache and tragedy. NSYNC's manager, the late Lou Pearlman, was behind one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in the US, and his boy band clients were among his many victims. Pearlman was an incredibly successful businessman who managed some of the biggest stars of the 90s and early 2000s. NSYNC aside, he also helped artists like the Backstreet Boys and Aaron Carter find fame. This gave him enough credibility to be able to successfully scam investors out of millions of dollars that they would never see again. He lured people in to invest in companies that operated under his cooperation, Transcontinental. The problem was that these companies didn't exist, ABC News reported. Former NSYNC member Lance Bass came forward to reveal how he and his fellow bandmates were affected by Perlman's scam. In the 2019 documentary, The Boy Bang Con, The Lou Perlman Story, Bass revealed, We were making $35 a day, which was our per diem, and I remember thinking that was such a lot of money, because this was all free. Everything in my life was free. Bass went on to reveal he and NSYNC eventually realized Perlman was pocketing most of their earnings. Both NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys later filed lawsuits against Perlman for withholding a portion of their profits. These lawsuits were eventually settled. Former NSYNC member Lance Bass hid his sexuality during his time in the band. He didn't reveal he was gay until 2006, four years after the band split. Bass made the big announcement in an exclusive interview with People, telling the outlet, I knew that I was in this popular band and I had four other guys' careers in my hand and I knew that if I ever acted on it or even said that I was gay, it would overpower everything. The singer went on to share how he felt about finally revealing his secret to the world, telling people, The thing is, I'm not ashamed. That's the one thing I want to say. I don't think it's wrong. I'm not devastated going through this. I'm more liberated and happy than I've been my whole life. I'm just happy. Although Bass found happiness after coming out, he had far different feelings about his sexuality during his time in NSYNC. Bass revealed in an interview with ET in 2018, It was when I was 19, 20, and everyone started having serious relationships that I really started feeling depression for the first time. All the guys had girlfriends, and I was the only one who didn't have anyone. I was like, I can't keep this ruse up much longer. I knew my whole life I was gay. NSYNC's breakup likely raised many questions, given the group parted ways in the midst of some of their biggest successes. Much like fellow boy band One Direction, NSYNC announced a hiatus in 2002 and never returned. So why did the group break up? It turns out that the story has remained a bit unclear over the years. Former band member JC Chazé spoke to HuffPost about why he felt the group never returned from their hiatus. At the time, we just felt like we had exhausted every kind of idea for what we were doing, and we just felt like, okay, let's do something different. So that's what we did. Other former NSYNC members tell a different story about the group's breakup. Joey Fatone suggested that the split took place due to the success of the solo career of his former bandmate, Justin Timberlake. Fatone told Huff Post, We thought we were getting back together. It was, okay, after Justin does his thing, blah, 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 we'll get back together and move forward and do what we got to do. And then it was like, nope, the record company wanted to push Justin. Fatone went on to share that he was happy for Timberlake, but was left in the dark about the future of NSYNC. During an interview with Zayn Lowe for Apple Music Essentials, Timberlake suggested that he and his bandmates had discussed the split. In 2015, Lance Bass came forward to reveal that he and his fellow NSYNC bandmates were preyed upon by someone in the music industry. Bass said during an appearance on The Meredith Vieira Show, This happens to men too. It has happened to me. When I was 16, 17 years old, there was someone that we worked with that was inappropriately touching us. Bass went on to add, I was even aware then at 16 that this guy was a pedophile and he was touching me oddly. The musician went on to share how he and his young bandmates reacted to the harassment at the time. Bass continued, With the guys, we would talk about it. We would kind of joke about it, but it's not right. a joking thing. But as a, as a kid, 
I don't know, it was just, it was just, it was odd. The singer didn't reveal this person's identity, but in a separate interview for Access Hollywood, he shared that NSYNC's manager, Lou Pearlman, touched the band members inappropriately. Bash shared that Pearlman told the group he minored in physical therapy and knew how to make their muscles appear more prominent in photo shoots. He later provided further clarification on his claims. Bass revealed on his Sirius XM show, Dirty Pop with Lance Bass. No one from NSYNC was molested that I know of, so there was nothing more than inappropriate touching. The infamous Lou Pearlman died at age 62 while serving a 25-year sentence in relation to his Ponzi scheme. While Pearlman may not have had the best intentions, Justin Timberlake and Lance Bass still seem to be saddened by his death. Timberlake took to Twitter to write, I hope he found some peace. God bless and R.I.P. Lou Pearlman. Bass shared how he felt about the late music industry mogul's death during the 2020 special, The Hitman from Pop to Prison. The star revealed in the special, When I heard that Lou Pearlman had passed away, I was so confused on exactly how to feel. I was like, how could you die right now when we don't have this closure? You need to apologize. Like, there are so many people who are waiting for you to realize what you did. Bass went on to share that he was relieved that no one else had to go through what Perlman put his artist through when he was living. But he ultimately felt guilty for feeling that way. He later shared he is now focusing on healing following Perlman's death. After enduring a frightening health experience, Lance Bass revealed he was finally diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. He told People in May 2022, I had symptoms before, but you know, I kind of just dealt with it, not knowing exactly what it was. I was a dancer my whole life, so I just figured it was because of dancing. According to the Mayo Clinic, those with psoriatic arthritis can experience joint pain, stiffness and swelling in any part of the body. Bass told people of his symptoms, It definitely started in my shoulders and then in my knees. And again, to me, that was just such a sign of dancer pain. So I just thought it was completely normal, totally ignoring the signs. Bass also told the outlet that he raised awareness for his condition with his Double Take campaign, in which he and choreographer SJ Blue teamed up to create a TikTok dance to help people identify symptoms of psoriatic arthritis in different parts of the body. They hoped the dance could help people receive a proper diagnosis. Bass shared how he has benefited from finally getting diagnosed during an interview with E! News. Once I found out that it was PSA, it changed my life in the best way possible. Possible, because then I knew how to go about my workout routines, and I shouldn't be afraid to work out my shoulders, knees and all that. It seems that Justin Timberlake's time in NSYNC may have taken a toll on his vocal cords, because the singer has had a number of vocal health issues over the years. In 2005, People reported that Timberlake underwent surgery to remove throat nodules. The musician continued to deal with vocal problems in 2018 and even had to postpone his The Man of the Woods tour. He took to Instagram in December 2018 to make the announcement, writing in the caption, I'm sure you have heard that that I've had to postpone several tour dates due to bruised vocal cords. My vocal cords are healing, but they are not all the way back to normal yet, so my doctors want me to continue to rest my voice. They have asked me to hold off on singing until next month. This wasn't the only time Timberlake had to take a break from his career in order to prioritize vocal rest. In October 2018, he took to Instagram to announce he had to postpone a performance at Madison Square Garden because his vocal cords were bruised. Dr. Steven Zeitels, who has performed vocal surgeries on a number of stars, spoke to Billboard about the severity of Timberlake's injury, telling the outlet, This is not a situation that will solve itself. When blood goes to the vocal membranes, they don't vibrate properly. Since NSYNC and teen pop star Aaron Carter shared the same management team, it's perhaps no surprise that the boy band was heartbroken following the news of the singer's death. Lance Bass took to Instagram to share a lengthy heartfelt tribute after Carter's passing, writing in part, He quickly became the little brother to all of us and was known for being quirky, funny and always trying to make people laugh. As the years went by, I've seen Aaron hit so many highs and lows. I've learned so much about addiction and mental health. 
Bass went on to share that Carter's family and friends attempted to help him through his struggles prior to his death. It seems that Bass wasn't the only NSYNC member who was devastated by Carter's death, because the band also took to their official Twitter account to share a message in remembrance of their late friend. The band wrote, Our hearts go out to his family, friends and fans during this difficult time. Rest in peace, Aaron. 